Good morning, guys, gals. Ted from PV Farms here. It is Sunday morning. Happy Father's Day, everybody. We're back here on the farm. Uh, Going to produce a nice little video for you guys today. Show you guys what's been going on here on the farm over the last probably month or so since I posted a video. Like I said, we're just out here watering the garden this morning before uh, Mother Nature's uh, beautiful, beautiful sunset right there. You can see that nice little ring right around. I can't follow it. Yeah, that ring right there. That's our sunset this morning. Uh, we got a lot of things we're going to be doing today, but I want to show you guys what's been going here on Pewview Farms. A lot of really neat, interesting stuff. So, guys, do me a big favor. Please like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel if you already have it. And I look forward to talking to you all real soon. Please enjoy the video. So, as you guys can see here, we got an old hose. Just a little, it looks like maybe a 20-footer, 20 25-footer. It was basically going to get thrown away. It already had a couple holes in it, cracks and stuff like that. And out here watering the garden because we haven't got a lot of rain around here. So we've been watering this pretty regularly. You spend at least a half an hour. So we drilled a crap ton of holes in it. Put a brass cap on the end so it was pressurized when you turn it on. And voila, you only got to move it about three times. The garden's soaked. You can be doing other stuff in the process. Here you can see we got a nice little row of sugar snap peas vined up on uh, that nine braid uh, electrified wire, which is not electrified. I don't know how well the peas would care for a little bit of voltage. We got a little row of beans. That was all that came up. Uh, it was supposed to be a full row. So we tied on to that with some more beans. So hopefully those will come up. We had a couple pea pea plants uh, seeds left so we finished it out with peas so we got some more peas we got all of our uh, low vine right in there our squash there's some uh, cucumbers there's a zucchini right over there uh, down yonder is where we got our row of onions let's see if we can get around the, the water fountain here and I'll show you guys the rest this is just a variety of onions we got going on right here. Radishes. Uh, we did plant some kale the other day. For those of you who don't know what kale is or don't like kale, man, we found a way to cook it. And uh, maybe I'll actually do a video on that. That's out of this world. I love it. We got our tomatoes to have a nice fresh garden salad during the summer. Green pepper plants to fry up for some... Uh, Homemade Italian pork sausage, maybe. And then uh, we got a nice little row of lettuce here that we just planted. So hopefully that'll come up. So we got a really nice little garden here. Just uh, have fresh vegetables each and every night here on the farm in the summer. And then the thing we kind of went overboard on, or I went overboard, we got four different types of potatoes. Each row, there's four rows, are potatoes. And this is a hay bed, guys. This is uh, pretty much what we cleaned up out of our mangers for the winter when we were feeding the cows over there. And I didn't think you could grow potatoes in a hay bed, but unreal. I don't think I've ever grown potatoes this well before. So we're really excited to see how this turns out. Uh, we've watched, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos on these uh, hay bed potato beds or whatever you want to call them and uh, this is doing really well so excited to see what kind of yield we're going to get so here's a pew view farms garden and uh, let's see if we can actually get this hose moved and get it over we're gonna give this a shot usually i turn it off but we'll see if we can do this without getting too wet So far, so good. Not bad. While we are uh, waiting for the garden to uh, 
get uh, watered. So you guys uh, are piglets this year. We are doing pigs again this year. Say hello. Say hello. These are uh, Iowa piglets, guys. Uh, ended up getting a really good deal on a large shipment of pigs that came from Iowa to New York. And, uh, yeah, these are off of one of them big, big pig farms that were having a little bit of trouble due to the crisis. And uh, they're fortunate enough to come here on Pewview Farms and uh, have a good home till the middle of September. And then... Uh, have a really good home in a lot of people's freezers, including mine. Super excited. Let me tell you what. These pigs are astronomically growing really quick. I was a little worried about getting pigs so late in the year because usually we try to do it in the spring. But uh, the way these guys are growing, I'm not really too worried about them making size by the end of September. So... Huh, and the boys love these guys. I think these guys are a little spoiled, actually. They're like little pets to the boys. But they know. Definitely good food, they know. So as you can see here, we got the Case International 8430. Yes, it's been used. We've been working on hay. Uh, we've made 100 bales as of today. We're just working around the weather and stuff like that. Uh, had a little bit of trouble, not with the baler, with the way that I was tying stuff. And uh, we made uh, about 50 crappy bales that are going to be pretty fun moving from that farm to this farm this winter. But I got it figured out, and uh, I don't think we're going to have that trouble anymore. So we have been making hay, guys. Uh, we've done 40 acres so far. I got another 28 acres left to do for first cut. Hopefully this week, I see a little bit of a window. We'll be able to get uh, at least eight of those acres. That's just two small fields down the road from here. Get that done. And then all the equipment can be back here at the main farm. And uh, we'll concentrate on out back here. There's 20 acres of really good yielding. Uh, hey, we do really well off of this field here. So I think this year we're going to be putting some uh, small squares upstairs. That's something different we haven't done here on the farm within at least the last six years. So we're gonna try doing a couple wagon loads of squares and uh, I will take you guys along on that journey. I apologize, I did not get any footage of uh, doing hay yet this year. It was just really busy. Uh, I had a window and I really wanted to get a lot done and I did not pick up the camera and shoot any footage. So I sincerely apologize guys. But like I said, hey, we're back now. Uh, I'd like to produce a really interesting video for you guys today basically just show you guys what's been going here on the farm like i said it's been about a month since i've talked to you guys and uh i look forward to talking to you guys the rest of the day like i said we're going to be doing a lot of neat little projects here on the farm today father's day oh yeah you should not take off i am taking off i'm enjoying the farm so we're going to be going over across the street here and uh, we'll see the girls uh Really quick story for you guys, because you guys haven't seen what's been going on with the cat, the cows, calves, and stuff like that. We've had three cat, one, two, three. We've had three calves as of to date. We have, I'm getting there, hang on. We got two calves over there. Yeah, we're short one calf. We had an incident, so we have two calves. Uh, there's another eight left to go, I believe. Eight or no, seven. There's another seven calves left to go. Calving this season is all over the summer spectrum. I'm not really sure exactly what happened with bull and stuff like that, but I'm pretty sure that they're bred. We've been able to bump calves and future moms that are gonna be having calves, just when they're gonna have them, I don't know. So it's gonna be a process and the learning curve for me now because now our calving for the next three years at least is going to be all over the place uh nobody's really consistent so it's going to take a while for everybody to get back to a normal routine and everything where we can have our calves all in like a one month process so it's kind of a bummer but hey i guess a calf is better than no calf especially when you're a cow calf operation so, hob, cow calf hobby operation. Like I said, we're only 10 cows here, so 
and uh, that's plenty for us that's what I enjoy and it sounds like these guys are ready to come out so we'll, maybe we'll let the chickens out here really quick and uh, let them do their thing yeah there's the chickies there are the chickies Okay, guys, so basically what we've done here is uh, I'm sure most of you guys that are familiar with agriculture, farming, hobby farming, whatever, are familiar with these spring gates. Uh, I'm starting to slowly transition over to these spring gates. Uh, I'm a very big fan of them. They're easy to use. They're easy for the kids to get in and out, and they hold the livestock back. Uh, the guys, I think probably once or twice, would probably touch this and didn't care for what was inside of them little wires that are going boing like that so uh, we're starting to slowly switch these over and all i do is these are nice i think they go from uh eight feet to 20 some feet or maybe it's 12 feet to 24 feet so you can have a various size opening opening in a gate area and these will work uh all i do is i get those little double sided insulated uh, slide hooks screw them into the pole and uh, just put little jumper wires to that end so when you take this off this is not live you can touch this and not get zipped yeah i was a little afraid to do that because i haven't done that yet but and as soon as you hook it up now you're live so and they're super easy like i said you know instead of trying to unchain a gate swing it lift it because your ground's uneven you just kind of go like this and you go like oh like that voila done you're inside the gate the animals can't get out you're in so the farm is slowly getting transitioned over to these i'm actually going to go to our local running store and grab a couple more of these today because today we're going to be working on this lower lower pasture down there uh, there is one gate that I need to hang and these cows are ready to move. They've done a really good job on this bigger part of the pasture here So we're gonna get them to some fresh grass and stuff like that. So that's what we're working on today guys So as we're over here doing our little walk through we're gonna go down and uh, Check on the animals. I'll show you guys what's been going on with the girls uh, We do see that we got a little bit of an issue here. We got a, the middle wire, which is just a ground wire um, not hot is hot now uh, looks like something went through it and broke it and i'm sure it's crisscross here and there on the hot wire yep right there perfect spot so we're gonna have to turn the fence off and uh get this fixed because we're obviously losing a little bit of juice so my guess is probably a deer or something maybe even a bear we've been known to have bears go through here tried uh, meandering through there and uh, mess the wire up say hi to Sonny Pewview Farms mascot what's up buddy what up mr. Sonny's huh and flies and he's been sprayed too flies are horrible this year guys absolutely horrible and everything has been sprayed hadn't it buddy so as we're walking through here as you guys can see it's the herd I believe our uh, herd bull, he's right over there, and uh, he's already doing his job. Number 84, Crazy Bee. She had a, she was the first one to have her calf, and uh, that was a calf that uh, is not here. And uh, I guess she's got her 45 day heat cycle, because uh, he was uh, very interested in her yesterday, as was that guy right there and that guy right there and that guy right over there i mean they were all pretty interested in her so she'll hopefully be bred back uh she'll have definitely a little bit earlier calf than what we're used to but i don't know i i gotta get back into this cycle basically where we're getting our calves in the month of april if anything crazy be that'll be a march calf but that should be all right for around here. We'll we'll make do with it. So as we're walking across the herd, 77, she hasn't had her calf yet. 
and uh, I have bumped a calf in her um, let's see this is the mother of our last calf Penelope we called her not her but the calf and Penelope's down there uh, she probably won't let us get too too close 82 my baby beauty looks like she laid in a pile of uh, poo poo she's starting to bag up and we have bumped the calf in her so hopefully sooner or later she has hers but I'm thinking right there's 84 she was the one having all the fun yesterday with all the boys number 98 Definitely bumped the calf in her, and you can see she's got a nice little side belly right here, uh, hanging low on that side. And she's starting to kind of, I mean, she's still got somewhat of a bag. So, hopefully. And then down there, we'll see how close we can get. I don't think we're going to get too, too close. So we'll just zoom in, I think. Maybe. Right there, that one right there is a Penelope. That was a heifer calf. And our calf before that, that's the Fonz. We named him the Fonz. Where'd he go? Oh, right there. And he's a steer. So those are the two calves so far that we have here on the farm. And uh, they're doing very well. A uh, quick story about little Penelope right there. Uh, she originally came to this farm with the intentions of being an escape artist she totally lived on the opposite side of that fence over there and up in the woods up there she did not live in this area at all uh, mother did very well at hiding her and she did very well at hiding herself but uh, they're doing pretty good guys uh, pretty excited actually she's kind of walking this way which I'm surprised so, would like to get a tag on her, but I really don't think we're going to catch her. So, well, we'll see. That might be a good video in itself, just trying to catch her to get a tag on her. Ah, oh, Penelope. Or no, that ain't Penelope, dummy. Olive. The boys named that calf Olive. That's right. Where am I getting Penelope from? Maybe that's what I want to name her. <laughs> that's olive beautiful little heifer calf though she's a little small but really really nice looking calf the Fonz the Fonzarelli the boy's like who's Fonz you know I had to explain to them about happy days they had no clue whatsoever so, but basically, guys, that's the herd uh, right over there at Nitro and D. They're doing well. They love it. They're loving life over here. But uh, as you can see, these guys are getting the grass down pretty good, um, other than these uh, flowers and stuff like that. So we're going to try getting this lower pasture down here open. We just got to go around and check it, make sure all the wires are intact and where they need to be. And uh, we'll install one of them spring gates on an area down here, and everything should be good to go. So just kind of a really quick recap from previous videos. For those of you guys that do follow the videos in the channel, know that I was going to do a watering system in here. So each paddock had its own watering system. So they weren't traveling to one paddock to get to water. Well, that's what's happening this year. Um, the good thing is, is I do have 1,200 feet of 3 quarter inch high pressure water line already bought. It's here on the farm, just haven't got to it yet, basically need to do it. What we're going to do is we're just going to be laying it down along the bottom of the fence line, let it lay there on the bottom, maybe zip tie it in a couple spots so it don't get kicked around too much, and uh, split it off with just little valves once we tie it in down to the barn down below there, and uh, we'll be able to do that. Haven't got to that project yet, been doing a lot of other things. So hopefully within the next couple weeks, I'll be able to get to that. So these guys ain't coming back to this area here. Because as I'm looking, they're eating it down pretty good. And it's not giving it a chance to regrow. So 
hopefully we can do that soon so for now we got a water tub down here at the barn with a float on it so we don't have to check it and I have one up across the street from the main farm here and we're just coming over with that 300 gallon poly tub and uh, everyone's kind of just checking us out chilling and seeing what's going on I see uh, 84 over here I don't know if she's in the camera view or not is uh, getting a little sniffy action from one of the bulls that we have here so yeah she's definitely uh, in heat so really like to get that water system going here to just make life a lot easier here on the farm and make the growing of the pastures a lot more better so you know, you do what you can do with the amount of time that you have around here and uh, make do with it and keep a smile on your face and love it up all right see right there that guy right there that's uh, doing the little sniffing action he's actually supposed to be a steer uh we never got him banded and when it was too late when i did get him into a stall and got him pinned wasn't able to get the bander on him so he's still a bull and he's not supposed to be <laughs> so oh well it is what it is guys right <gasps> that should be the new famous saying because that's the way you got to look at things anymore in this day and age it is what it is <gasps> all right what you guys are looking at there is uh the new addition to Pewview Farms storage facility area. Uh, this is a 54 by 60 shed. Uh, we've been working on this basically the way it's gone. We started this, I would say, a little over a month ago. Uh, we set the poles, me and my father, and got everything all squared up, ready to go. And an Amish crew came and did all the framing, trusses, steel framed in the lean-to and everything like that for us at a very reasonable cost. It was well worth it. It would have been one of them deals where we would have been working on this pretty much all summer long between, you know, our jobs, our side jobs, the farm and everything else. And that's not good to have piles of lumber just laying out in the summer heat and sun. We wanted to get the shell up at least, and uh, I think we're going to be doing the rest of it, putting the steel up and the doors and stuff like that. But, uh super excited about this guys as you guys can see we got the hay equipment just pulled right in out of any kind of weather sun stuff like that uh this is going to be a huge huge asset to the farm i'll be able to keep my camper in there you know we got trailers stuff like that so really excited about this between these two storage buildings that we have now pretty much everything that is owned here on the farm will be able to be put away out of the weather and that is huge that is key when you spend that kind of money on equipment that is key to have the storage for this so super excited well this is your guys's first look at uh kind of what's been going on here behind the scenes uh so as you guys can see here we got a nice big old wide opening i believe it's 16 foot by 14 uh there's 15 plus ceilings in here so Anything and everything is going to fit in here. The lean-to, pretty tall itself. That'll be a 10 by 14 door. Not sure if we're going to do a slider or not, but it's going to be nice. Uh, hay binds can be backed right in here. And when I say hay binds, I mean the 492 that's sitting right over there right now. And uh, my neighbor Dan, he's got uh, the two 489s. And uh, basically all three of those can be backed in here and uh, out of the winter weather. So super excited about that. There's a little glimpse of the Kubota M7040 with the bale spear and uh, everybody's favorite tractor. I get a lot of comments on the 5610. That's probably one of my favorite tractors itself too. Other than the seat that I put on it is horrible. Makes for a very rough ride, uncomfortable. So we're going to be doing something about that here pretty soon. You can see that was hooked to the rake. That was my wife's job when we were doing hay. She was out there raking while I had the baler hooked to this, and I was baling. Nice little old vintage roller right over there that uh, rolled the massive amounts of gravel that we had to put in here to get up to grade where we wanted it. 
Then we got the bush hog tether kind of tucked back hiding over there. So a lot of room in here, really. I mean, if you strategically park stuff around in here, you can fit a lot of stuff in here. So really looking forward to see how this shapes up by the end of the summer and uh, what we get done. It'll definitely be closed in, ready to get uh, stuff stored. What else we got here? Oh, it looks like we got the seven foot bush hog uh, roto tiller. That did a lot of jobs this year, um, including a nice little sweet corn patch that uh, my father planted. Maybe we'll walk down there quick and see how it's going. We're down here at my uh, parents' place, and this is right next door. For those of you that follow the channel and know what's going on in my life that I put out there for everybody on YouTube, uh, this is an awesome little hangout. I love this area here. My mother does a beautiful job at decorating. Hanging baskets, cucumbers, tomatoes, plants, cherry tomatoes, cucumbers, bud light, bush light. This is our little weekend hangout place here. Looks like that was a good night here. Come out back here to the fire pit area. As you can see, Bud Light is a favorite here. We got the Bud Light fire ring. This is a patio. This is uh, the first stamp job that uh, I ever did. Had some help on this one. As you can see, a crack, but uh, this is one of the first stamp jobs we did. Nice little hot tub area. They just got that going. The kids have been enjoying that. So now we'll hop back down. Down below here is the uh, sweet corn garden. And then uh, this is the first time I've checked it out since we planted it. My dad said it's been doing really well. All right, as you can see there, here's the sweet corn. Uh, it's a nice little patch here. I believe butter and sugar and sugar uh, silver queen is in here. Has been sprayed. So hopefully the weeds will not take over this year like they have in the past. But judging by the looks of it, it's coming up all right. Don't know a whole lot about sweet corn, but uh, the rows look pretty consistent throughout here. So hopefully it'll be a nice, good year here for the sweet corn. And uh, I'll be eating sweet corn every night. Wow, looks good. I haven't seen it look this good in the... Uh, several years that uh, he's planted this so we get some rain on it this week that'll help too it hasn't got much water down here yeah it looks like the planter did a pretty decent job this is the first time i planted corn didn't get a video of that either guys sorry apologize this little sweet corn there but that's nice to see that the weeds are not overtaking none of this stuff Cool, cool beans. I think it looks pretty good, guys. And there we got a beautiful 20 acre field of some gorgeous grass mix hay. A lot of clover this year, I noticed, in spots. Hopefully we can get to this sooner and later. But uh, I think this is gonna be a really good yielding field. It's got a lot of manure on it. And uh, I did overseed it. So hopefully some of that uh, used seed that I used around here took and uh, will help a lot. Wow, I think this is going to be a beautiful crop. Well, we're kind of coming up on the back side of the pole barn. So just kind of to show you guys how much fill. There was a lot of fill that was put in this area. Over the last 10 years, and there was a lot of fill that had to be brought in to get it up to where we wanted it for height. Um, we weren't quite ready in that aspect. So a lot of gravel had to be purchased, but uh, wow, that is up there. Man, from down here, look at that. I'm like way down. Holy crap. Looks pretty cool sitting up there like that, though. 
All right, guys, gals, I think that's going to be the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It was kind of just more or less of a video of just kind of letting you guys get caught up to speed what's been going on the farm here. Um, lots of interesting things. Just been busy, 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 busy. I sincerely apologize to the people that faithfully follow the channel and have been expecting videos. They haven't been getting any. Uh, try to get back in the swing of things. Like I said, it's just been busy and it's kind of hard sometimes to pick up a camera, set it up in different angles, and then to spend at least two hours, if not more, kind of editing it and making it a little more interesting for you guys to follow. And uh, so I apologize. Again, happy Father's Day, guys. Uh, I hope everybody out there is enjoying their day. I hope everybody's been staying safe, been enjoying the time that they've been given to spend with their families. Uh, hopefully a little more family orientation has been going on. I know I personally have been doing a lot more things with the boys. The boys have been experiencing life in general, which I think has been a really good thing for them. So that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do me a big favor. Lila, favor. Like the video, comment down below and subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to talking to y'all real soon. God bless America.